And Perry from Mars. Oh. The Rage Fighter. Three, two, one. How are we doing tonight, folks? I am here with Brandon Beast Mode Meyer. And if you just saw that highlight that we put out right before the, the video started here, you know that Brandon is an absolute savage when he gets in that bare knuckle ring. So Brandon here, he's he's fighting this Friday, May 17th, for bare knuckle fighting championships here in Omaha, Nebraska. Fought just recently down in Miami, Florida for BKFC as well. The man is a is a is an absolute savage. His career has spanned for decades. This guy's been doing this thing since I was in high school, and he is still on top of his game, still killing it. Brandon, how are you doing today, man? How do you feel? How are you looking forward to this fight? I feel fantastic, bro. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this fight. Um, you know, I was hoping to get um, – I, I want to get a, a, an opponent that's going to, you know, put me in the path, you know, to to the goal. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not not that I'm, I'm not going to look past my opponent in front of me here. But, you know, here in the near future, I'd like to get a ranked opponent and, and, and really show BKFC that um, I'm here. And I've already accepted offers against ranked opponents, you know what I mean? And uh, whatever logistically, it didn't work out. Uh, but hopefully uh, I can put them on notice again, let them know I'm here to stay, and I'm ready to do big things. So, yeah, and a little peek behind the curtain into your fights. So your last fight was not your original opponent. You you had a couple of switch-ups um, on that card, if I remember correctly. And then you come into this fight against this guy, young, up-and-coming guy. Um, I mean, was he like early 20s probably? And you're a big underdog to this guy. You're like plus 500 going in there, and you made this guy look like he didn't belong. Like You just absolutely smoked this guy for the whole fight, and just it, was, it wasn't close. And it was funny because it all – it kind of I – think, I think you beat him before the fight even started if I remember, because when he, he slapped you at the like face-offs or whatever, and you just swung on him right there. And in that moment, I think he realized like, Oh man, I'm playing with the wrong guy here. And then <laughs> even better, you guys go into the, like at the beginning of the fight, like at the ring, uh, he goes to like touch gloves or shake hands or whatever. And you're just like, nah, dude, we're not doing that. Just like right. Yeah. Past him. yeah. Dude. That shit ain't no game to me. You know what I mean? Like if you slap me, bro, like, that's like, I'd rather you punch me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, you know, so my reaction, you know, it's it's always going to be worse than your reaction, you know? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was surprising, but, uh, you know, I think it got handled pretty uh, correctly. Definitely. Dude, and you you uh, you definitely looked like a million bucks out there. And it's it's interesting because a lot of people kind of were counting out, obviously, being a five, plus 500 underdog. And I think that's because they looked at your, your fight prior to that. And they, they were like, man, this guy doesn't have it anymore. Well, another peek behind the curtain here. Dude, you needed a, a hip replacement going into that fight. So your movement was just not there. Um, you can't even, you know, throw your heavy cross or whatever because you can't throw your hip like you, like you want to. Um, so going into that fight, like with a bad hip that – clearly needs a replacement, which is crazy that you're still fighting with a replaced hip, but you're doing fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, how different did it feel? Just, com just getting that, that new hip in there. And when you step back into the ring, I felt like a brand new person. Like, I feel like, uh, like reinvigorated. Um, you know, I had changed, you know, tactics with my training, you know, uh, I did this whole camp you know, uh, by myself, you know, 75% of my training at the gym at my house. And then, you know, of course I got Bud Crawford's gym up the street. I can go up there and pick a fight with those guys whenever I want, you know, and, uh, you know, and then it's really just finding good quality training partners with, uh, guys here in Omaha. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I've bounced around to almost every gym in, in Omaha and, and, uh, I'm not really interested in fighting guys from Omaha. You know, we're all trying to out, get out of here and make it make it to the big shows. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I just want I, I want guys to uh, uh, 
get big shots out of Omaha. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm like letting them guys know, like, we got some bangers here. You know what I mean? Definitely. Carlos Trinidad in the main event. Dude, yeah, I interviewed him just the other day. I, I, I was telling, uh, I, uh, I was on another podcast a while back and, uh, they had, um, his opponent from the prior fight to his, uh, his last one or whatever, uh, when he fought, um, former, former title holder, um, can't, can't remember, can't, can't remember his name right now, but anyways, uh, I picked Carlos to win that fight. A lot of people slept on him cause they didn't really know about him cause he was from mm -hmm. Omaha, but I know. He's a he's a dog. I've trained with him Absolutely. before. He's a really really good guy. You know what I mean? Good people. Uh, but yeah, y'all gonna see him too Friday. Hey, and for everybody that's watching this interview, I'll put that on the end screen so you can check that one out next if you haven't seen it. Cause we I, I interviewed him just uh, I think it was like Sunday or something like that. Uh, but so that kind of you know circling back to the beginning because we just talked about being from you know the Omaha Fight Crew like everybody that's here how. How did you get into the world of just mixed martial arts, bare knuckle box? How did you just get into fighting in general? What led you down that path to where you are now? That's a long story, uh, but I can uh, I can give, give you us the spark notes version. Give you snippets. Uh, I had a rough, rough upbringing. You know, my uh, my stepdad's doing life for murder. You know, and uh, I went through all the all the drama with that. Um, you know, I knocked him out the first time when I was nine years old. So that was your first um, win when you were nine, you're saying? Nine, yeah. Your first I knockout win at nine years old? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't my first win. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and so I was always fighting growing up. But uh, later on, uh, I got into a fucking fight that was, uh, excuse my language, but uh, okay. it was, uh, I had fought, there was a Carter Lake and Council Bluffs beef back in the day. Let me, my phone's going to. Put it in low power mode there. Um, I got, you know, there used to be a Carter Lake Council Bluffs beef, and I had fought a few of them. And uh, we uh, got into a, a huge fight, uh, me and a guy named Danny Bruni. Shout out to Danny Bruni. He's on my Facebook, man. This there is, you go. This is a legendary fight. Uh, we uh, were at a house party, you know, and then uh, we ended up leaving that because uh, a bunch of fights broke out at once. It just got out of control. So then once uh, every, everybody got in contact with each other, they wanted to finish it. So we met up at this park, parked the cars in a circle, turned the headlights on or whatever. I can't remember. You know, something like that at the park. And, and uh, you know, we fought. I, and I swear it was probably a 10-minute street fight. And Danny was a – you know, he's tall and had the long, long arms, man. And, uh, you know, it was a scrappy fight, man. And then uh, – I, I remember um, after the fight, my buddy Raul, um, <laughs> he's, he's like, man, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life, bro. Like, what the? And, and granted, remember, this is a this is a street fight, bare knuckle. You know what I mean? So this is where You're I You're born for this. That's where I started. So I went into MMA, uh, you know, because uh, I got introduced to a friend that uh, was doing it. And... Uh, my you know that's where my career took off and did 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 what it did but like come in full circle back around to uh bare knuckle it's like i was made for this shit the only thing you're missing is the the headlights lighting up the lighting up the ring i know right dude that's like that's it's funny how that works because a lot of guys that got in when you got in it's something similar where it's like a lot of street fights and they were like yeah i guess i might as well just so go see if i can get paid for this because like now you see a lot of people that get into it for the sport of it, you know, all that stuff. But back then it was a lot of guys that were just like, you mean I can get paid to go fight somebody, you know? And even if it's not very much, like 40 bucks. Okay. You know, <laughs> so uh, that's awesome, man. Cause you have, you've had a very long career because your first amateur MMA fight, or I guess you didn't even, did you, even, I guess it was amateur. I don't know. Back then, like it was, like it wasn't it was really a blurry line, but yeah, my first fight was in 2006. I, that was a freshman in high school. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was gnarly. Like I, I, I knocked the dude out and uh, like they couldn't wake that dude up with smelling salts. Oh, <laughs> it that, took like, was that like the paramedics had to carry that guy out. Oh, is he, is he alive still? Like, you yeah, know? he's alive. Okay, good. 
Tim, Tim Bazer remembers that. I bet he does. Was that your, so? Your first fight was on Tim's promotion. Oh, yep, Omaha Fight, Omaha Fight Club. Yep. Gosh, wow! Do you remember what number that was? Man, I don't know. It was shortly after he started the promotion. So it had been real early, yeah. Yeah, it was really early. I, I want to say it was like a few months after he he started OFC. Yep. That's so cool. Yep. Man, I remember takes... I fought I fought one of the same nights that Benson Henderson fought. Oh wow! And it, Benson, it was it was Ben's first MMA fight ever. Mm -hmm. Right there in OFC. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Benson actually trained here in Omaha for a while. So yeah. that's that's wild for, for a Made lot of people. They do so. here. Yep. Yep. That's so crazy. So any obviously so you went through your MMA career. You looked fantastic. You have some fantastic highlights. Maybe I'll put a couple of those in here as well um, before we before the interview hits. But uh you've had some some sick highlights. You almost started a riot in Columbus, Nebraska one time. I, I remember that thoroughly. Um <laughs> You know what? Elaborate on that story a little bit. The fans are going to love that. Oh, man. So, yeah. So I went out to Columbus, and um, it was my first fight. You know, uh, side note, I went and did 10 years in federal federal prison. So I didn't fight for 10 years, right? So I get out, and this is my, uh, this is my first fight out. I'm fighting a guy on the undercard. Um, and, you know, just some nobody. They just they don't know where I'm at. You know what I mean? They don't know where I'm at. And yep. uh, so something happened. The dude didn't show up, got cold feet, and uh, didn't show up to the weigh-in. So, like, I'm out in Columbus without a fight, right? Well, something happened with the main event. I don't I don't remember what happened. Uh, dude got hurt or some shit. But uh, uh, so the main event guy was out, you know, and he's this undefeated amateur making his debut. He's got his own gym in the, in the town. The whole city's wearing his shirts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so they know, can't let him off the card, obviously. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So they got to find him a fight. Long story short, I end up getting matched up with him in, in this in this uh, in main event. And also, I was a I was the champion for a promotion called Torment Cage Combat when I when I went to prison. I left the champion, and after I left, this guy became the champion for that promotion before it dissolved and so me getting matched up with this guy was like poetic justice and uh it, it couldn't have worked out better you know uh he was a really strong tough wrestler and uh you know he was taking me down the first round but i clocked him i clocked him a good one in the second round and uh, yeah, you did. it was uh yeah it was night night um I remember it vividly, dude. You were up against the cage, and he was, like, throwing a few shots. You were covering, and then you just, boom, and just done so. Yeah, it looked like he got clotheslined and, and um, just hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was uh, awesome. It was a good one. Dude, the, I, the video, the full video is hard to find. because You can find the knockout. Maybe I'll put that as one of the clips, because that you can find, even though the footage is horrible, because it was – decades ago a decade at least a decade ago maybe more but no, no, uh that, that was the one when i first got out that was in uh 17 17 okay it wasn't that long ago i guess Gosh, it feels like so much longer but either way the footage was pretty rough but maybe i'll put that as one of your highlights because it was it was fantastic the unfortunate thing is the footage always cuts out before you get to see the the riot when people storm the cage Oh, and, they edited they edited all that stuff out. Yeah, they, they did edited all that stuff out. But in the raw footage, you can see the cameraman pans over, <laughs> and you just see mayhem. Chairs flying it's awesome. in the air. Uh, people rushed my corner. My somebody threw a bottle. My corner man st stole on the the dude that threw the bottle. It it was yeah, it was pandemonium. I had to. It was my, so my, fun. My, my homies had to escort me to the car with pistols. Yeah, I bet. I don't doubt that a bit. That was that was a wild time. Uh, okay, so let's let's take it to present day. You got a fight coming up this Friday. You looked fantastic in your last fight. That's going to be a hard performance to outdo. If anybody can do it, it's you. But that's going to be a tough one to outdo. In this one, is the game plan the same? Is it the same style? Like, or do you? Just kind of go in there and feel it out at this point in your career. Like, what do you feel going in, bro, and like, my, how much do you plan? With my training, bro, like, I, 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 I 
practice so many different styles, you know, you know, I'm constantly switching my stance and, and, um, you know, I, I might go into a, 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 you know, a Philly shell or I might, um, you know, just switch between different kinds of, uh, of boxing stances and, and, and angle changes and stuff like that. I try to be, I try to mix it up so much that, so game plan wise, I don't really like to game plan. I just like to be ready for anything. You know Fair what enough. I mean? I'm there to impose my will and know that I got to answer for anything that he responds with. Yeah. And, uh, in your last fight, you really made good use of that clinch. And I think your like Muay Thai style background really paid off, even though obviously in BKFC, you can't do like knees or elbows and all that kind of stuff. But the, the ability to clinch up similar to, you would, to how you would in a Thai clinch, that you were really able to mess him up in that clinch. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, and even in my MMA career, you know, I've, I've always been pretty good from the clinch anyway. So uh, doing that to somebody that's not really used to dealing with that style, uh, he, it was hard for him to have an answer for it you know and then having and then having the open hands and being able to actually grab and 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 utilize that uh makes it a whole different ball game definitely those gloves those gloves the the mma gloves get really stiff yeah especially if you got like brand new gloves from like the promotion you know what i mean that's why i always try to dig around and find old gloves (laughs) that are already broken you know what i mean Uh, find the old ones yep that's but, uh, uh, so okay. So this one, you're fighting pretty early on the card, if I remember correct, right? Are you opening up the card? Is I that correct? I want to say I'm opening up. They got me on the lineup opening. That's wild. They, weren't you just like the co-main event last time or something like that, or like I the feature the fight? Feature. Yeah, I was the yeah. feature fight. And now you're opening up. So this is wild. But you're opening. They obviously put you on the open uh, opening fight because you're exciting. So that's a good sign. You want to get yeah. the, the crowd. We're moving. gonna kick. We're gonna definitely kick it off. And. I was surprised to see that you're like, so you opened up as a decent sized favorite, but you're like the slightest underdog last I saw, which was yesterday. And I was like, are people dumb or do they just not know? So you're just going to have to show them again. I like that. I, I do too. I love being the underdog. Fans of this channel are going to love that you're the underdog too. So I got a lot of gamblers that watch this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you won them a lot of money last time. So I'm sure they're very happy with you. Uh, being a plus 500 and all, uh, but going into this one, obviously your goal is get the win. And after you get the win, the, the next step is, you know, you'd be what three and one in BKFC. Is that correct? Yeah. Three and one. Your only loss was like when you went in needing a hip replacement. So obviously from there on, I mean, one, two more wins, you're kind of right up there getting those main event spots, similar to like we were talking about with Carlos Trinidad, uh, getting that main event spot getting those big names. Uh, I think you can do it. I know you can do it. Obviously, you've uh, been doing this long enough that you you know you can do it. I mean, you would have quit a long time ago if you didn't think you could. So uh, before we hop off here, do you have anything that you want to plug? Um, I'm, real quick, I'm going to plug the fact that you're obviously wearing one of my T-shirts. So anybody that wants one, you can get it. The links are in the description of this video. That's, that's a slick one right there. Brandon looks uh, solid in that. You can get it in any color. So, But Brandon, what do you want to plug? What do you want to tell everybody to check out or anything like that? Uh, check out my new uh, uh, music video that just dropped, uh, Thuggy Yuck. Thanks. We'll put a link to it in the description. Yeah, mm-hmm. most definitely. Uh, I love this video. Uh, I, I, I wish uh, that I could get it to play on the big screen for my walkout, but they're not going to be able to do it for this one. Um, they said that if I can, if I make it to one of the bigger shows – that I can have my boy walk out with me and do the performance. So it's happening. Incentive. We're going to do that, but go check that song out, man. That video is dope. Excellent. Yes. I'm definitely going to link that in the description of this video because I watched it the other day and like, it was pretty good. It, it, you know, features you heavily. The music style isn't the style I normally listen to, but it was still good. It was catchy. Yeah. It, It was basically like a highlight video for you, honestly. So that was cool. Well, I mean, it was it was designed to be my walkout song. He wrote the song for me, so I mean, it was gonna highlight that specific thing. So uh, I appreciate that, man. He actually hit me up and was uh, motivated to do that. So awesome! That's fantastic. Yeah. So you you didn't know him prior to that? No, I didn't actually. 
That's awesome. Oh, he just uh, uh, he had heard about me and and, and reached out and, and was interested in doing a walkout, man. And uh, I was super happy with uh, how it turned out. Uh, I want to send shout out to uh, my uh, sponsor, Pro Market Connections. Um, also, uh, Just Blaze Clothing Line. Uh, let's see here, uh, Street Vibes Car Audio. Um, I know I'm gonna be. I know I'm gonna forget. All y'all know who you are. I mean, we we got we 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 gonna get in the house and shake it up. Right? That's right. So, all right, everybody. With that, everybody wish Brandon some luck. Make sure you go ahead and watch his fight. Obviously, this Friday it's BKFC Fight Night Omaha. His links to anything that he needs is in the description of this video, as well as mine, of course. You can get a shirt just like he's wearing. Like this video on your way out, and I appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you so much.